usual, well, after any big construction or design construction project, you know, you commission the thing, you have all the load banks on the floor, you, you finish, you roll them off, you high five, you drink, you drink some whiskey and smoke some cigars, you say, yeah, we did great. And guess what? There's no substitute for actual server load on the floor. So, you know, with our fancy whiz bang, brand new 277 volt power supplies and servers and everything, after repeated input um, event, repeated um, uh, input power events, we experienced some high end rush um, at the uh, power supply level. And it was turned, and uh, what was happening was it was actually tripping off all the uh, input, the, uh, the main circuit breakers that were input that were feeding all the uh, power supplies through the reactors. And you know, after that, we went ahead and put back on the engineer's hat and figure out how to, and figured out how to uh, solve this problem. So internally, we were able to recreate the issue in, in, in a controlled environment and discovered that this was actually caused by an input capacitor on the power supply. And as a result, we, got to, we needed to uh, adjust all the uh, circuit breaker settings. Not too fun after the fact, but uh, you know, easy fix, relatively speaking. Likewise, if you notice, certain applications don't always work <laughs> with our uh, proprietary servers or proprietary uh, systems. So as you can see here, we were forced into using some old school or uh, some traditional OEM 208 volt uh, servers. And as a result, we developed or uh, with some of the uh, UPS manufacturers, we were able to develop a quasi-custom in-row UPS system um, that let us that allows us to replace one of our rows, one of our typical uh, 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 proprietary rows, with some OEM equipment. Can pass off to Dan. Sure. So mechanically. There are two highlighted issues that we came, that we saw. Um, first one was what we like to call jungle mode happened to us. So there was an error in the control sequence that came through from if we had those indirect cooling coils and if the relative humidity of the outside air were such that it was above 65%, close the outside air dampers and go into recirc mode. So I was on vacation one weekend last summer, and I checked out my phone, and the data center went up to 95% relative humidity. There was condensation on the floor, and we actually only lost about 10 servers. 10 servers condensed on the power supply. But it was a great lesson learned for our entire team to have some kind of a catastrophic failure occur at the data center, shut it down, drain it, and, and see you know, what we needed to do. Um, so yeah, that was one of the operational issues we ran into. And then secondly, as I was alluding to before, the way that we operate a single suite, we've got 14 air handling units, and they are all controlled individually by their supply air temperature and humidity. So their supply air temperature and their humidity dictate the economizer outside air dampers, so how much outside air and return air comes in, and also how much spraying we do to hit uh, temperature or humidity. So in the beginning, we found that they were all fighting each other, just like much like it would happen if you have an office uh, conference room being supplied by two VAV boxes with two separate temperature or thermostats. So you could see down the line in the outside air intake corridor, the outside air damper staggered, 80%, 20%, 80%, 20%. Uh, and the reason that we wanted to have this uh, individual control was to be most efficient. So certain parts of the data center are loaded differently than other parts. So you can see the return air temperatures coming back are different. They're between about 85 and 95 F. So it just took a lot of time to loop tune and look at trending, and we got it down to such that it all works pretty tight. I would say the outside air dampers, instead of being 20, 80, they're probably off by like 5 to 10% at most. 